when we talk about the various calculations that we do in science, if we're doing them uh, with information that we've collected from a lab, many times you're going to be asked, and especially uh, actually in international baccalaureate IB courses, uh, not so much in AP and in your regular classes, right? And, but in university and in IB, you're going to be asked to determine a, an uncertainty value for a certain calculation that you've done. Okay, so, uh, you know, because sometimes you can be you can be off a little bit, but the, the instruments that you're using have a certain tolerance or uncertainty that's built into them um, that we need to know what they are in order to see if we've got results that make any kind of sense. Now, we throw around words like accuracy, accuracy and precision a lot. We try to throw them around if we can say them. And, well, what do they, what do they really mean? Uh, just a little brief overview. If you have, like, say, the bullseye of a target, right? and you actually nail with about five shots um, all of your shots into that middle of that bullseye. What you've done is you've actually shown a great degree of precision and if that is your target answer right there, that middle part, you've got your highly accurate and precise in what you've done. Now, what happens though if you're shooting all the time, five shots, and you get them here? Have you been very precise? Yeah, you actually have been quite precise, but you have low accuracy. Get it? So there might actually be a reason for you being thrown off all the time. And that's something that instrumentally, when we talk about the instruments that we use like weighing scales or, or uh, uh, flasks or pipettes or burettes, they have built into them a certain degree of uncertainty and those are called random errors of uncertainty. Um, now, oh, by the way, if you actually got that, right, that would almost be, if you averaged all those points together, they're very imprecise, but actually when you average them together, they actually exhibit a high degree of accuracy. Yeah. Okay, now, with those tolerances that I just mentioned uh, for various instruments, you will find that a scale uh, uh, might read to three numbers after the decimal. And then be the, the scale manufacturer will give you a tolerance for that, and it'll say plus or minus, and the scale I use at school, is 0 .003 in terms of its absolute uncertainty. The absolute uncertainty is the same unit that your, uh, uh, that your measurement is taken in. So, this number of 1.300 grams that I weigh on the scale of a certain chemical is really 1.300 grams plus or minus 0 0.003 in terms of how accurate that machine is going to be. Which means, of course, that it could be that the answer is as high as 1.303 grams or as low as 1.297 grams, right? So that's the range that that would that mass would fall in. Actually, that's a pretty good degree of accuracy for there for that scale. Now, sometimes you're going to be given those uncertainties, not in an absolute form, but in a percent form. And if somebody said, well, what's the percent uncertainty for this right here? What you would do is, you say, well, okay, well, what percent is this of this? So really, the uncertainty in percent would be written as 1.300 uh, grams, right, plus or minus, and the calculation is 0 0.003 divided by 1.300 times 100. And that means then that the percent uncertainty here would be equal to 1.300 grams plus or minus, and I believe that when you do the calculation, you get that equaling that, 0 0.23 so that's the percent uncertainty. Now, why would you need a percent uncertainty versus an absolute uncertainty? Well, I'm going to show you how in a calculation those two need to be employed to be able to arrive at an answer that will give us the percent or the absolute uncertainty of random error that can be found in our calculation.